Are you somebody that's looking for the best guns in Apex Legends Season 10? Well, let's dive into it and maybe upset some people in the process. So a few days ago, I put a video out talking about my TTK chart that I put out for Apex Legends. So let's take a look at this um, and do actually a tier chart of what the best guns in Apex actually are. So as we dive into this, we're going to notice a few things right off the bat. On the TTK chart now, we have a ranking system. And the Devotion and Havoc both are no spool at their fastest fire rate and it still only barely knocks out the hemlock um, so just kind of keep this stuff in mind as we're going through the sheet i'm going to flip back and forth and discuss why each gun is where it is um, unless it's pretty obvious so let's get into it so as you see here we're starting out with the l stars the l star is a gun that most people pick up um however i feel like it just doesn't do what you need it to do more often than not in the battle royale as we look over here, we notice that it has a 0.8 TTK, so it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Um, it definitely ha lets you hit your shots, because there's not that much recoil to it. But um, I would definitely say this is more of an arena gun. For me, I just I think that the arenas is the place for the L-Star to be used, and for the price of 500 um, RP, or whatever the heck it is in the arenas, that is the gun you should be using in the arenas for your first few rounds, until you can get the guns you actually really like. The Havoc is a gun that I would say actually just heavy avoid. This gun, um, the initial recoil without a turbocharger is just a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, it's just not worth picking up more often than not. Um, the Volt. Actually, the Volt is a gun that really surprised me. It's looking at TTK chart. It's, it's really quick. Not as fast as the R99, but it has a little less recoil, um, which can be a big key for players coming into this game that don't quite understand the recoil of this game um, it's just slightly less i'm going to call it viable because it's just not what i'm going to pick up given the opportunity the devotion so the devotion um, is a 300 to 900 rounds per minute gun you can put the turbocharger in it to just get rid of that spool up entirely but even with that being said are you guys ready for this we bump way down to 300 and it goes to a 1.8 kd 600 which is about the mid rate 0.9. It's one of the slowest killing guns uh, in the LMG category. But even at the fastest rate, it's fast. Yeah, it's faster than the Hemlock. But even at that, I mean, it's just not worth picking up, in my opinion. You're going to burn through energy ammo like crazy. And it's just not going to do what you need to do, um, even if you hit your shots. So here we head to the Flatline. So the Flatline is a gun that I think people are going to kind of dis... are going to argue with me on this one. Um... It's essentially an AK-47. So when I when I reach for a gun in Apex, this is usually one of the guns that I, I go for just because I'm very comfortable with the recoil. It has a lot of recoil, mind you. It has a lot of recoil. Uh, but it just, for me, it feels at, like home. So I'm going to call this actual meta. Um, it's one of the, the guns that, if you're great with it, it's just, it performs very well. For most players, maybe it's more viable. Eh, maybe that's what we'll throw, we'll throw it in viable. Um, however, in arenas, it's not usually worth the cost when the R301 is right there. So the Hemlock is probably the fastest TTK in the game as far as ARs go or you know projectile guns. That's, that's not a spool-up type gun. And the Hemlock is just, if you run it in single shot, the thing is absolute meta. Um, it's got very little recoil, if none. Uh, it shoots fast. It does what you need to do when you need to do in a single shot. So keep that in mind. The Prowler just popped out of the, uh, the the care package. As you see here, it's kind of a mid-pack TTK. But it's definitely worth picking up if you see it. Now, the big key here is going to be that 23 to the head. And also, the Volt does the same thing, but has a significantly faster fire rate. Um, and we start looking at the other guns, like the VK... That's absolutely key there, and same with the Hemlock. But then we run into things like like with that Prowler, where it's a five-shot burst, right? Or full auto with a select fire, which is the way to go if you can find one. Um, it's just one of those things that it's not usually worth using if there's other options around. Um, it's usable, yeah, I guess, but it's not something I'm going to pick up given the opportunity. So the Rampage is a the new LMG, um, and I did two different numbers for this. I did one with the uh, revved up and one without. 
So as we can see on the TTK chart, uh, kind of compared, it cuts out about a quarter of a second TTK over here. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty big knock because that puts it down to Spitfire category. So the ramped up, revved up, um, should be ramped up, right? This is Ramparts gun. Um, ramped up, revved up, Rampage definitely is in the meta category right now. Wingman. This one depends on you. If you are a great shot, if you are somebody that can maintain your target, the Wingman is absolutely viable. Um, it, the, so the key with the Wingman scrolling down here is going to be the 40 97 but 47 to the leg or 41 to the legs 45 to the body and 97 to the head so that is absolutely critical as you can pretty much two tap anybody no matter what their armor level is um, other than red armor but at that point you have other issues more than likely so the 33 repeater i think actually is one of the best marksman guns in the game um, it has a higher fire rate it does a lot of uh, head damage does a lot of body damage um, so you're hitting for 42 to the body, um, 74 to the head. So essentially uh, four head taps to take down somebody with red armor. Um, and with a team fire, obviously that goes significantly faster. So I'm actually going to put the 3030 in an inviable. Um, it's, it's a great gun if you can hit your shots, but obviously you need to be able to hit your shots just like the wingman to make it work. So the G7 Scout is a gun that we kind of need to have a discussion about as well. So it's got a little fa faster fire rate. Than the 3030, but it does a lot less damage to the body. As you can see in the TTK numbers, it's darn near a quarter of a second difference. However, light ammo seems to be significantly easier to come by, so this might be a better option early mid game. Um, it's not one that I would look for late game. Obviously, late game, you're looking for things like Cravers and things like that. Um, I'm going to throw this in viable because of that the headshot damage. Um, it does kind of replace the 3030, giving the opportunity to. But, you know, obviously that's personal preference between the two. So moving into the RE45. The RE45 actually is a gun that I really, really like. Um, I think it's actually pretty usable fairly late game even if you absolutely had to just to pick it up. Um, it's an arena's like round one or two actual gold mine here. So just kind of keep that in mind with this. Um, it's super cheap to get the, the first gun. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. So we're hitting for 18 to the, the head, which is very minimal. Um, and it kind of shows in the TTK, however, that it's still a fairly decent gun, and it's it's okay, right? It's an early to mid gun for BR and for arenas, which is where I'm going to put this. It is, it's the way to go for the first couple rounds. All right, so the R99. The R99, dude, if you are a Call of Duty player, this gun feels a lot like most of the Call of Duty guns. Um, and it's not only viable, it is absolutely the gun to use. So the TTK on it might not be the best, um, but it is definitely in the top bracket of guns. So it's, it's worth using and then some. Uh, the .722 TTK on the level 1 uh, body armor is really important because if you can get this gun early game, you can really, really fry out and piss some people off, get them out of the game, and move on to the next you know, group. Um, something else I want to mention about this gun is that it has very little head damage, so it's not necessarily worth using in that way. Because if you look at the headshot damage, um, it's 14, so you can fry somebody with red armor at the same rate that you would fry somebody with uh, level 1 armor to the body. Um, which means that you, this gun should be used as a cleanup gun, if that makes sense. So, like, for instance, if you're rushing a team, you would hit him with your rampage, swap off that, grab out your R99, and just kind of clean up the team. It's kind of how that gun's supposed to be. It's a secondary, right? So I'm going to throw this in meta because, dude, it is the gun to use in most circumstances for a backup gun. The 301. So again, if you're a Call of Duty player with 301, it's going to feel like home to you. This is going to feel like a, an M4 or something like that. It's got a little bit of recoil up and to the left. Um, a good way to mitigate that is to just kind of strafe. Um, and that'll keep your aim pretty much true dead nuts right in the middle. Um, also, what you can do with this gun is tap fire 10 shots, and that'll do just straight up vertical um, you know, shots up in the air. So that can help you immensely for sure. As we look at the TTK chart, this gun is fast. It is quick. It shoots fast. It burns through ammo quickly. 
Um, on single shot, actually, the headshot damage is worth really looking at here. Um, you actually can kill somebody with nine shots to the head with a level four, um, level five. What do you what do you call it? the red armor? Um, so it, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely meta. I would say absolute meta. P twenty twenty. If you pick this gun up, I I feel bad for you, and that's just all I'm gonna say about that. It has one of the slowest TTKs in the game, other than the um, at least the Kraber to the body. All right, now we're on to something more that I use all the time, actually, is the shotguns. So the Mastiff, actually, is one of the best shotguns in the game other than the horizontal spread, which can really screw you over a lot of times, unless you're barrel stuffing somebody. So I'm actually gonna throw this in Viable. And if you look at the TTK chart, um, it's actually a fairly, it's the fastest TTK in the shotgun category until we start talking about level four stuff and level three stuff. And man, that is doing the same shot to kill with the next gun. So the EVA 8 is entirely meta. If you're not using the EVA 8, you're doing something wrong. Um, so the EVA 8 has a, as it implies, 8 shaped uh, kind of spread on it. And dude, that's absolutely vital to getting your shots off um, and packing those pellets in the body. As we'll notice with most of these shotguns, level 1, level 2 does about the same. Um, level 3 and level 4 does about the same. Same with the Mastiff, but it still has um, about a 0.4, which is like 100 milliseconds difference in um, TTK, um, as well as it also putting out a faster headshot TTK. So just kind of be very aware of that. So the Mozambique actually is okay. Um, a lot of people really, really don't respect this gun like they should. Uh, when you hit your shots with it, it's great. When you don't, it's extremely punishing. Same with the next one. The Mozambique, really, I mean, it's usable, but I wouldn't necessarily avoid it. Like, I would pick it up as a cleanup gun, just like the R99, if I can't find one of those, or ideally the EVA 8. The Peacekeeper has a lot of headshot damage, 129 headshot damage, but it's still going to take two to the head to take down somebody uh, that's got level 1 armor, right? So... That's just not overly effective. So you're still sitting at a 1.364 second TTK um, with the Peacekeeper, no matter what way you shake it, whether you hit the head or whether you hit the, the body. Um, but that headshot TTK is going to matter. It's going to be the same for everything. So whether you hit somebody with um, a regular one level one or whether you hit them with a level four, level five armor, it's still going to be a extremely fast TTK as long as you hit those headshots um, as it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this <sighs> usable or viable. I'm My personal preference for this gun is usable because of the slow follow-up fire rate um, and, and whatnot. But like I said, if you use it as a cleanup gun, it's great. But I'd rather have the EVA 8 with its faster uh, fire rate, which allows you to have more mistakes and still be just fine in the firefight. So here we hit the care package guns. The Spitfire already had one of the fastest TTKs uh, in in the LMG category. Uh, you see, it's just behind the revved up Rampage. Now, mind you, this variant is going to be a little faster, a little better. Um, <clears throat> however, I'd still only call it viable um, versus the Rampage just because of the the pain in the butt that it is to find this gun. The alternator. So the alternator is, to me, a gun that I will pick up more often than not because it's such a laser accurate gun and it shreds shields right now. So I'm going to throw that right into the meta because of the disruptor rounds. However, think about this. As you're hitting somebody, you know what? Let's go down to usable even because this, this, this thought just hit me. As you're hitting your shots, the damage is going to just reduce like crazy right now because of those disruptor rounds. You're going to bust through somebody's shield, which might lower this TTK a lot. Um, but mind you, that TTK is only being lowered within the first 50 damage because of those disruptor rounds. After that, you're going back to the standard damage of 16 damage per hit. And actually, the, the Prowler has a faster fire rate. Um, as does the Volt, and the R99 does by far. So maybe maybe usable is the right option here. The triple take. So the triple take is 
is a weird one. Um, if you hit your headshot, you're still only going to be doing um, 138 headshot damage, which is just behind the uh, the Sentinel is not charged. So I'm going to actually throw this in usable. It's not the one that I would pick up, but if it was there, I probably would maybe look at it, um, depending on what guns I had as a different you know backup. Kraber, absolute meta. Um, if you see a Kraber, grab it because it's going to do 435 damage to the head, which is obviously is enough to take out two basic full <laughs> armored guys. Um, so there's that, and 130 or 116 to the legs, 145 to the body. So if you hit somebody in the body with this, they're gonna feel it, but you're still gonna have the same TTK basically whether they've got level one or level 4 armor, but if they're unarmored, obviously that's a pretty quick kill. So that makes that absolute meta. The longbow. Um, the longbow is... kind of... It's okay, right? So the longbow's got a decent arena, you know, performance, but I'm not sure I would use it outside of arenas. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there. So the big thing with that is you're gonna use that to kind of poke and break down the enemy's armor and things like that in the arenas. It's just not a great gun for BR because BR, you don't want to have a prolonged gunfights. You want to be as fast as you possibly can, wipe that squad, regain, and do what you got to do. The charge rifle. Avoid the stupid thing at all costs. To me, I mean, my opinion, the TTK on it is extremely slow. Um, and it, the TTK is only great and good, even we'll, put, we'll say, if you hit every single shot on the burst so just kind of keep that in mind <clears throat> the sentinel i'm also going to throw into arena because you can charge that up before the game starts hit your first headshot um and that headshot is going to hit for 175 which should be enough to melt for the first few rounds of arena after that point it's just not worth using because people are going to be pushing a little harder having a little more health Unless you can use this gun to gain the initial uh, fight, you know, balance. It's the only time that's really great. In BR, it's just not worth using because of the slow follow-up shots. Um, but again, you know, two, two, three, and three. So just kind of consider that. The bow. Um, yeah, that's just going there. Yeah, it's fast. It kills fast. It hits, if you hit your shots, it's great. But the vast majority of player base cannot hit that shot and the it takes three shots to down somebody with one level one armor right um as we look though it's still 105 head damage that's just not worth using in my opinion it's just it, there's no reason for it to exist in my opinion but guys this is the tier list that i've got this is what i'm looking at for what i'm going to use my ideal loadout personally is going to be rampage r99 um however Hemlock, R99 is great, Rampage, and maybe the EVA 8 is a cleanup gun. Um, however, the 301 and the EVA 8 complement each other very, very well because you're going to be usually pushing very hard and using that to your advantage. The Kraber, obviously, you'd pair that with something like the R99, uh, same way you would with sniper support with the uh, guns in Warzone. Now, it's also important to note with all of these guns, they have different attributes for when you are reloading with and without ammo in the magazine so just kind of keep that in mind as well but guys this is this is where we're at if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like if you like me give me a subscribe have a good one guys i'll see you around